Hey guys, so in our previous video, we looked at FX mode quantization of a resonant model, and we, we just got some basic familiarity with like, okay, this is how FX quantization works, this, you trace the model, you get this graph module thing, and then we just kind of looked at like the very basics of it, but today, we're gonna dive in a little bit more, and this isn't gonna be a crazy video, I'm just gonna show you a couple cool things about how the graph module interacts with quantization. Specifically, I'm gonna show two things. One is how does the assignment of qconfigs happen? Like let's say you have a global qconfig that you assign to everything, and then you wanna assign things uh, specific to individual layers. How is that going to interact throughout the model? And then I'm gonna show a second thing, which I think is super cool, but I'm not gonna spoil it. So we'll get to that when we get there. But yeah, let's dive in. Okay, so this is where we left off in our previous tutorial. And so we can just run this. Python name, why don't you love me? Oh, sorry. So we saw that we just quantized the model and we looked a bit at the graph module and see what it looked like. Yeah, we can see that we, we quantize it fairly well. I can only apologize for my microphone. Uh, I'm having old laptop versus Ubuntu issues. I will be getting like an actual professional microphone and stuff, so please bear with me, but this video and like maybe a couple other videos will be a bit junk, but the, the better microphone is coming, I swear to you. But yeah, so here we are, and we can see if we look at, you know, any individual layer or, you know, Qconfig, basically, we can see that, okay, oh, well, I'll take activation post-process. For the requantization step, we can see it's this fake quantized module, which we set as our global Qconfig, which was made up of the base activation Qconfig, which was this, which was a fake quantized quantization module. And then for the default, for the weight, it was just the default, which will look like this. Wait, fake quant. And this is just the average, this is the default config, at least they're specified for this, which is the, the fused moving average observation fake quantize. As I mentioned, we're going to look at two things. The first off is what if we want to set a specific, for a specific layer. So what we're going to do is that we're going to start using these learnable fake quantize modules. And yeah, we're going to apply that to all of our conv layers. So that is what we're going to do next. So... This is actually going to happen in a, in a bit of a way. So first thing to mention is that because this is a graph module, it inherits, you know, from what NN module, which means that it's going to have access to a lot of the same methods. So we, something that's quite cool about this, is that we can just use the same old named modules that we all know and love. At least I love it very much. And that is completely wrongly placed. So if we go all the way down here, I'll just paste that there. Delete that, paste that over here, and go. So here we're going to do if has attribute module and out channels. And so we're actually just going to apply this to anything that has a weight tensor. And we're going to see what effect this has. It's, it's going to be quite interesting. But we're going to create this new qconfig, which is going to be qconfig. And we're going to say, what is it, activation equals learnable act qconfig. And then weight equals a learnable, learnable weight qconfig. And actually, I'm going to have to make a quick change to this learnable weight qconfig because for this learnable fake quantize, and especially because we're doing per channel symmetric quantization, this means that there are individual quantization parameters per channel. And that just means that when you're initializing this, you actually have to specify how many channels there are. Um, so we're gonna turn this into a lambda function, which I think should work. Oh, oh that is wrong. This is right. Um, so yeah, we just input that and that will get fed to channel length. And so when we do this, we can write module now channels. And then we, I, I mentioned in the previous video that there are a bunch of different methods for this qconfig map, one of which is set global, but now we are going to look at a different method, which I think is quite cool. So 
there's, you know, we've seen set global before, but there's also set module name, which we're going to use now, and it, it literally means you just give the name of the module and what queue config you want to assign to that, that specific module. Um, there's also set object type. We could say we want every linear layer to take a specific queue config. Of course, it's, it's slightly more tricky, you know, if you have to specify individually the channels of each of the modules, so that's, that's not going to work in our case. But you can also do set module name regex, object type order. I don't actually know what this is, and maybe we'll have a future video on that when I find out what it does actually mean. But for now, we're just going to use the set module name method. And so, you know, you can see that it's adapted, the qconfig is adapted via the for loop for each of the individual modules. We get access to this out channels attribute. And yeah, that should be all good to go. And actually, this is all wrong because we don't want to be doing this here. We want to do it on the actual modules. Am I correct on this? Yes, that is that is correct because we want to uh, quantize this afterwards. And I'm just going to add a comment, assign you config for each module with eight data. Cool. And now we're going to look at the difference about what happens when we do it this way, as opposed to what we had before. Because before everything was a fake quantize, and now we're going to look at which ones are fake quantize and which are learnable fake quantize. Actually, I'm going to do this in a bit more of a systematic way. So we're going to say for name in yeah in fx model and modules, and we're going to say if module is, or well, I guess if, oh yeah, I think I have to do type if module, and I think is instance is going to work in this case, fake quantize, and name, so if I just copy paste that, okay, so we see that some things are still fake quantize, and some things are learnable fake quantize. So let's look. Oh, actually, they all seem to be learnable fake quantize. Let's look at this quickly. Model, and we're going to say, oh, this is wrong. That should be name. Let me just check because I am suspecting that that is wrong. OK, yeah, this is still fake quantize, and it should not be. So we're just going to do that again. Yeah, there was just a bug here. There should be name instead of the actual module. Okay, yeah, here we can see that now it's a significant subset of the requantization steps are fake quantize, and the other ones are learnable fake quantize, which I think is quite cool. So we're going to analyze this a little bit. I'm going to try and understand why sometime, when is it learnable fake quantize, and when is it fake quantize. Oh, I wish that would not take up the whole screen. Maybe I can minimize it? Aha. That text might actually be small for everyone. I'm going to lean on... Okay, hopefully this is good. Okay, we're going to... Sorry, I'm just going to try to find something that I assume is good. Okay, hopefully this is legible to everybody. So yeah, we have our normal activation post-process, which is our initial quant stub. Then we have a conf, you know, a requantization step, a max pool, a requantization step. And we're going to look at this quite interesting because activation post-process zero is actually a learnable fake quantize. And this was the first thing that kind of surprised me about the qconfig assignment because our global qconfig is fake quantize and for everything that was that has a weight tensor we set uh, it to be learnable fake quantize and so this is the input to something that is that has a weight tensor namely conv1 and this is sent to learnable fake quantize which i find to be quite interesting so it's not just the output of conv1 which has a learnable fake quantize quantization input Oh, quantization module, it's also the input to that layer, which I think is worth keeping in mind. And so yeah, PyTorch has just kind of made that option. I'm not personally sure if I agree with it, frankly. My instinct is that if this is the global, this, sh this should fall under the bucket of the global qconfig. And in, actually in the next video, we're gonna do some more in that advanced graph manipulation, and we're actually gonna swap out this graph node for a different kind of qconfig, because I think that's important to know how to do. Then, yeah, we have activation post-process one with this is expected. And then we have a max pool layer. And, okay, I, I won't go into, into that yet, but we'll look for the first one that is actually fake quantized. Okay, so activation post-process five is a fake quantized. 
and we can see that that's after we have this second conv layer, then we have an add and we have a relu. That's just an add relu operation. In eager mode, you would use an add relu flow functional. In the graph, it's just done individually. And something I love about this is that there's no requantization step after the add because it is a fused add relu operation in the sense that there's no requantization step between the add and the relu. They acknowledge that you can just have the add, then you have the relu, then you have the requantization step because that makes it so that you don't lose resolution. Because, for example, you could have a requantization step here, but then it would have to be exactly equal to this one because you're basically zeroing out all of the negative values when you apply this relu. So there's not really any point having a, a quantization step between the add and the relu. But anyway, that's if you're not familiar with fusing, I, I would click on the link here, which should pop up right now, which will kind of go more into fusing if you're confused about that. But yeah, so that's the first thing I wanted to show was that when we do the assignments that the input to the layer will also be given these learnable fake quantize you know, depending on what that is. So just be aware that that's one thing. But the second thing that I wanted to show is actually super cool, which is that it's a bit conf um, this, this tripped me up for a while and I had to analyze why this was the case, but we have activation post process 29 and 32. They're both fake quantize. What about 30 and 31? Because here we see that we have this another ad relu. So we have a fake quantize. This is not a learnable fake quantize. That makes sense. We this None of this has a weight tensor, so it shouldn't be learnable fake quantize. It should just be fake quantize. But then we have an average pool. An average pool does not have a weight tensor. And then we have a flatten operation. That should also not have a weight tensor. And then finally, we get to this fully connected layer. But I find it interesting that, that yeah, the other ones didn't register when we did simple fake quantize, or that they didn't register, register as fake quantize. And the reason for this is super interesting. So if we look at 29, it's a fake quantize. If we look at 30, it's also a fake quantize. And if we look at 31, it's also a fake quantize. So some of you may have guessed what is going on here. How is it that we print out all of the fake quantize modules and yet 30 and 31 are not getting printed out? And the reason for this is because if we actually do this and we check the equivalency, we will find that they're actually equal to each other, which I think is something that's super cool about FX mode quantization, which is that it, it basically acknowledges that, hey, an average pool, it's probably going to have the same quantization parameters as the input tensor, because you're just averaging, you know, values. And so it, it might not be exactly equal the quantization grid might not be exactly equal, but it's probably pretty close. So FX mode just automatically subs it in. It just reuses the same requantization step. It's the same quantization parameters. There's not going to be any quantization error in that sense. And then the flatten operation, there should be zero quantization error for that. And yeah, okay, we we have this requantization step. It might not be strictly necessary, but it is good that it is exactly equal to the input because this is a completely lossless operation this doesn't do any data manipulation it doesn't change the values in any way so i personally really really like this i think it's one of the super cool things about graph-based methods for quantization that it's just smart enough to be like hey these should be shared quantization parameters so yeah i, I personally think that's super super cool and that is it i'm gonna end this video here in the next video, we're going to get into way more advanced stuff about graph manipulation. That's going to be a bit more intense. This was just kind of a quick video just to kind of show how the Qconfigs interact with the graph-based methods. But yeah, hopefully that was interesting slash useful. And uh, yeah, please leave a comment, subscribe, whatever. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.